KwaZulu-Natal is South Africa's second most populated province and situated on the East Coast. It's South Africans' favorite holiday destination, but often overlooked by international tourists. Beach, bush, berg, and everything in between is on offer. So if you're looking to book a trip of your own, then this video is for you. This is Craig and I'm Chantal and we both lived in this beautiful province up until last year. If you're thinking about traveling to South Africa and you want to add KZN to your travel itinerary, then we hope that this information will be helpful to you. So let's get started. The quickest way to get to KZN is to fly to King Shaka International Airport. You will most likely have a layover either in Johannesburg or Cape Town. The flight from Johannesburg to Durban is about one hour and the flight from Cape Town to Durban is about two hours. Only a handful of international airlines do direct flights. But if you're feeling more adventurous, you can always go on a road trip. So you can hire a car at Oratambo and drive to Durban. The trip will take around six to seven hours depending on how many times you stop. And our favorite is the stop at Burview mm. because there's beautiful views and lots and lots of restaurants. And do yourself a favor and get a wimpy breakfast. Wimpy on a road trip is a must if you're in South Africa. I like the burger and chips, <laughs> but always a coffee. According to a quick Google search, it seems like car hire would be around 3,000 Rand if you pick it up in Joburg and drop it off in Durban for 48 hours and the tolls are around 300 Rand. There are also buses running from Joburg to Durban which we have tried before and could be quite fun. Yeah, it's around 400 Rand for a trip depending on the days and the times. Or you can access KZN if you happen to stop in Durban Harbour or Richards Bay Harbour on a cruise ship. Now that you know how to get to KZN, the question is when should you go? KZN has fairly great weather all year round, but my absolute favorite month of the year is May. It's so nice. It has beautifully sunny days, lower humidity, and usually no rain. January and February are the hottest months of the year, but it can be quite humid, which could be quite uncomfortable. I'm sweating, it's so humid. <laughs> December is also really nice and hot. But I remember spending quite a few Christmases and New Year's indoors because of rainy weather. And in our experience, August to early December is not the greatest weather. It's very windy, sometimes very rainy as well. Getting around in the province would probably be best by hiring a car. A quick Google search showed me it's about 1,300 Rand to hire a car for 48 hours within the province. Driving is on the left side of the road and chances are that you'll probably get a manual Car. The highways are generally in a good condition. The speed limit ranges between 80 to 120 kilometers an hour. So it's good to just get in your car, travel, put the music up and just enjoy the views. But beware, there might be some road works on certain sections and a lot of trucks. Roads on less busy routes and also in residential areas might not always be in the best condition. And you have to be wary of potholes and people on the side of the road and walking across the road. Yes, people also run across the highway. So just always be wary. When it comes to parking, there are some places with parking meters. Most of the time you'll come across car guards where you should probably pay a tip once you get back to your car. Just make sure you take note of your car guard when you get to the parking and that it's the same guy when you get back. After you park, make sure all valuables are out of sight, even if there is a car guard. And we suggest taking the most important things with you. And I know all of this sounds very intimidating, but we would still highly recommend to hire a car. Public transport is not the best. There are taxis from the airports, but we would recommend that you find the approved taxi operators within the airport when you come out of your terminal. And it looks like they all have a set rate. And there's also Uber that you can use. On a side note, I have never used Uber by myself and that is just a general tip in the whole of South Africa try and have a buddy with you or get someone to track your uber ride ubers are also not available in the whole province we've used it in Durban and Umschlange which are cities and a couple of times that we try to order uber from Belito to take us just 10k south to Westbrook we have waited we called an uber about 10 minutes ago and it's been saying 15 minutes till pickup for the last 10 minutes so just be aware that Ubers might not run in the area that you have your holiday. We also suggest checking with your hotel because they might have a service. And certain tour companies might also provide transport. We don't have too much experience in that because we live there and we just drove our own car. <laughs> the currency used in South Africa is the South African Rand and these are the current exchange rates. So for one US dollar, you can get a one and a half liter Coke, a big pack of knickknacks, and a pack of Oreos. 
And for one pound, you can get a big packet of chips, uh, 80 grams slab of chocolate, or a loaf of bread. And for one New Zealand dollar, you can get a bar of chocolates, a small pack of chips, or a small can of Coke. ATMs and currency exchange facilities are widely available at airports, at shopping centers, and at banks. And our general rule while traveling is that we don't draw cash from freestanding ATMs. So the same applies in KZN. Google the main banks of a country. South Africa would be APSA, Standard Bank, Ned Bank, FNB, Capitec. It's always safe to use an ATM from a main bank. Cards are widely accepted and you can tap your card, but it's always a good idea to carry a little bit of cash with you to pay car guards and for when you go to a market. But this brings us to safety. This is always a major topic when talking about traveling to South Africa. So we'll suggest the following. Always be aware of your surroundings. Don't leave your bags or belongings unattended. And if you're in crowded places, make sure to hold onto your bag and Make sure the zip is closed. Don't carry large amounts of cash with you. Don't leave valuables in your car, and if you do, make sure it's out of sight. When it comes to the beach, don't leave your belongings unattended. And only swim at beaches where there are lifeguards. So all of these tips are valid for any country that you travel to, and personally, we adhere to this on our own travels. We've divided this next section into beach, bush, and berg. But no matter where you go, you are sure to find accommodation that will suit your budget. We'll start with the beach because this is the main attraction in KZN with the warm Indian Ocean. If you are limited with the time and you only have about two nights and you want to be close to the airport, we suggest the following. Starting with our favorite spot, Belito. We are probably biased with this because we lived in this area for the first three years of marriage. It is conveniently situated just 20 minutes north of the airport and we'd suggest that you find accommodation in Compensation Road, which is right on the beachfront. You can choose from resorts like La Montaigne to unique accommodation like the Sugar Shack and lots of variety in between. There is an amazing promenade with lots of beautiful beaches to choose from. Belita also has a big shopping mall and across the road is the market which has East Street with lots of restaurants and things to do which is situated at the Lifestyle Centre. Each area we're going to end off with Craig's favorite pub. So what is your favorite pub in Belizo? My favorite pub is at the Lifestyle Centre and it's called Robson's. They make all their own beer. It is fantastic. And if you do go there, you have to try the Durban <laughs> Ale Ale. So fruity. If you're looking for more of a big city vibe, then we'd suggest Umschlange, which is a 20 minute drive south of the airport. You'll be spoiled for choice with accommodation. You can find an Airbnb, which would cost you about 800 Rand per night. Or if you're looking for a five star experience, you could stay at the Oyster Box, which would cost you about 8,000 Rand a night. And if 8,000 Rand a night is too much for you, you can still go to the Oyster Box like we did and go to the Lighthouse Bar, which offers beautiful sea views and delicious cocktails or you can share a bottle of wine perfect place on the deck with the lighthouse in front of you and the ocean the beachfront promenade is one of our favorites and it leads through to the hidden forest cafe which serves great coffee by the way if you're looking for some nightlife then the Mschlange village is the place to go or you can go up the hill to the Mschlange arch which is just full of restaurants and amazing views there's also a gateway shopping center which is obviously filled with restaurants and shops and movies and entertainment beaches in Mschlange are great too but one of our favorite activities was the pasta making class that we did at Old Town Italy and this takes us to my favorite pub in Mschlange and that is the George which is in the village and I've had many a good tank beer there. You can also choose to stay in Durban City itself from the old and iconic Royal Hotel to the Elangeni or even Suncoast Casino. We definitely recommend going to the Roma Revolving Restaurant which gives you good 360 degree views of Durban City. There are also plenty of restaurants to choose from especially on the Golden Mile which is about an 8k stretch of promenade. You can hire bicycles, you can book a sub session or a surf lesson at Expressions. Go on a rickshaw ride with one of the locals. And my original script says that you can go on the cable card Fun World, but unfortunately, actually this weekend is the last weekend that Fun World will be open. So you won't be able to go there anymore. You can sit at On Point and watch the ships come in and out of the harbor. Or visit Ushaka Marine World, where you can walk around in the aquarium, go down the slides all day long, and even watch a dolphin show. And if you choose rather to be on the water, you can go on a harbor cruise, or you can go out to sea and see the whales and dolphins, and even see Durban City from the sea. 
Walking tours are always nice, but we would suggest booking with a group and Durban walking tours has gained a lot of popularity. So look out for them and book a tour. Which takes us to my favorite pub in Durban, which is the Durban Brewing Company at On Point, which is right by the Harbour Mouth. And you can sit there with an ice cold beer and enjoy the big ships coming in and out. You're so close to the mouth, which is really cool. That's a tough one for you because there's also a Robson's and it's mm. at the new cruise ship terminal. So you can also sit there and have a drink and watch uh, the cruise ships if there's one. It's not an easy choice when it comes to beer. <laughs> if you want to visit the following places, you'll need a little bit more time. First up is the South Coast, which is a local favorite. We spent many holidays in Margate, visiting family or even Port Edward at Tiawe Strand. There are beautiful wild beaches, nice coffee shops such as Beaver Creek. You can also explore the Mtumvuna River and across the river is the Walco Sun Casino and lots of accommodation. And in this area, coffee trumps beer. Meet your beer. <laughs> so no favorite pub because with Beaver Creek Coffee Estate, there's no time for breweries. It's our favorite coffee in the whole world and we'd always recommend that spot. Beaver Creek is located in Port Edward and you can buy all your beans online, which we've done many times. Just south of Durban is Amanda and Toti and where this guy grew up is also a favorite holiday spot for holiday makers from Gauteng. Here you'll find big sandy beaches, tidal pools, even a water park and the iconic Thirsty Whale restaurant, which just gives you beautiful views of the beach while you enjoy a good pub lunch and a cold beer. There are also lots of places to stay. We have stayed in The View, which is up on the hill, and the ocean views from there is amazing. And if you're in this area, you might as well head to Umkamas and go snorkeling with sharks, like we did. It's not as scary as it sounds. It was pretty freaky. <laughs> And if you're a KZN local, let us know where your favorite spot is on the south coast. Everyone has that little special corner. And that takes us to another one of my favorite pubs. It is in Umkamaz and it's called East Coast Brewing Company. They brew everything on site. Now we're heading to northern KZN. And this unfortunately is a place we only really started exploring after we've met. We'd hands down recommend northern KZN. To international tourists. If you want to see zebras and rhinos with a beautiful ocean view backdrop, then Cape Fidal in the Isamangaliso Park is the place for you. We even saw a little buck in the parking lot to the beach. There is a wide and long stretch of beach with the warmest Indian Ocean water. We've seen log cabins close by and I think there's a campsite too. I think for that type of area my favorite pub is definitely a cold beer out of the cooler box around the fire. <laughs> So this brings us to bush getaways, as Cape Vidal caters to both beach and bush. And you might wonder what it means to go to the bush. So the Africans say this when we're going to visit a game farm. <laughs> so a great base to explore the wildlife in KZN would be the small town of St. Lucia. We absolutely love this place. Accommodation ranges from self-catering units to personalized B&Bs like Maputaland Guest House where we stayed and we were welcomed by Jörg. He will sit you down on arrival, have a chat with you and figure out exactly what your interests are and then suggest an itinerary for you. From St. Lucia you can go on hippo and crocodile cruises where you'll see these animals in their natural habitats. You can do whale watching cruises, explore the Isimangaliso wetland park through self drive or game drives. International tourists might refer to this as safari. Turtle tours are available. You can do bicycle tours through the game parks, bird watching, deep sea fishing, horse riding, kayaking, and the list goes on. St. Lucia is situated a three and a half hour drive north of the airport, and we'd suggest at least three days in St. Lucia so you can explore all the different activities. Now, Northern KZN offers many different game farms and can be found through a quick Google search. Personally, we've been to Klitlui and Filozi, and we actually stayed within the park. Yeah, at the Hilltop Camp, which was a self-catering unit. You can book game drives with experienced guides, or you can do self-drive. This park is also home to the Big Five. Personally, we've seen lion, buffalo, a mommy and a baby rhino. Elephant. But we are yet to spot the leopard. We have also seen some upmarket game farms offering luxurious accommodation and some smaller private game reserves, like the Ndulamiti Lodge, where you can actually walk through the game farm and see all the animals without a guide. Obviously, there's no predators here, but we were lucky enough to come across a family of giraffe. It was so cute. Very cool. 
And if you're in this area, you might as well go and visit Rambo and Rachel, two rescue elephants roaming freely on the Bayeti Zulu Game Reserve. And this is an experience we'll never ever forget. If you're coming on a cruise ship to Durban Harbour and you still want that bush experience, then we really suggest the Tala Game Reserve or the Pizulu Safari Park, which is about an hour's drive from the port terminal. So basically, there really is something to suit everyone's budgets and time constraints. While experiencing the game, I must say my favorite pub is probably taking out of the cooler box again, but this time while we're spotting lions. Now, let's head to the mountains, or as we say, the Berg. You can choose between the northern, central, or southern regions of the Drakensberg Mountains. There are many different options for accommodation. From tiny home Airbnbs, to resorts and hotels, to little boutique hotels up high in the peaks. Our go-to while growing up was the Dragon Peaks Resort in the Champagne Valley area in the Central Berg. This area is really nice with a lot of things to do. Like horse riding, canopy tours, a bird of prey experience. There are great hiking options and even a brewery and a chocolate shop. And again, all the locals in KZN has their favorite spot in the Berg. So if you're a local watching this, let us know where that is in the comments. And another thing you can do is overnight hikes. You can go on three or four day hikes and sleep in caves, all organized by different guards or different tour groups. Even though we're in the mountains, we do have another favorite pub that I like and that has to be the Drakensberg Brewing Company that is pretty close to Dragon Peaks as well. And with this one, I don't even mind because Craig can go and sit there and I'll go to the chocolate shop to do a coffee and chocolate pairing. Fine with me. <laughs> If you have a bit more time, then there are some great experiences and unique accommodations, just a 30 or 40 minute drive from Durban. The most unique accommodation that we've stayed is the Giberland teepee camp at Giba Gorge. During the day, you can go on hikes, mountain bikes, and then you can wind down and enjoy a good pizza at their restaurant and even join their drum circle in the evenings. They also offer live music sometimes, or you can join any of the events that they have planned out. Another unique accommodation we stayed at is the Amazulu African Palace in Kloof. It's got the most amazing decor and great views of the Kloof Gorge. And if you stay here, you also have to go to the Amazulu Sculpture Garden with a walk through all these big trees and they incorporate these artsy sculptures on the walkways. It's very unique. In Yilcrest, you can stay in Masenga, a beautifully converted caravan. We unfortunately ran out of time, so we never stayed there, but definitely check it out if you're in the area. From Hillcrest and Kloof you can go to the Shongweni Farmers Market on a Saturday morning. You can explore the Valley of a Thousand Hills and even go for a ride on the Changa Choo Choo train. The Valley of a Thousand Hills also offers some Zulu cultural experiences. And that takes us to my favorite pub in Hillcrest Kloof area which is Stumpnose Brewery. Amazing beer and there was a brew on site. Just north of Belito, you'll have to visit the Grand Exotic, which is a very Instagrammable restaurant, even if you just pop in for a coffee. But there's also Canelands, which is one of my favorite, favorite places. It's a small boutique hotel offering amazing views of the ocean and a great spot for whale watching. And you don't have to be a guest to visit the restaurant. Lastly, there is the Midlands area, which is a destination in itself, a very popular place for weddings, beautiful little coffee shops, restaurants, pubs, and it's just a beautiful drive driving through the Midlands. And one of our favorite places is Granny Mouse, which is we where we got, got engaged. engaged. So In the wine cellar. Yeah. <laughs> the Midlands brings that misty feel to a holiday, which is really cool. And there's obviously a pub in the Midlands and my favorite is the Nottingham Road Brewing Company. They sell really cool beers and they've got a cool kind of description on each bottle. So I think you should go and try it out. I think it's probably one of the first craft brewers. In, in South Africa, yeah. yeah. So there are obviously lots of other areas in the province and everyone will have their favorite little spots. So this is based on what we like and our experiences. And we think they're really nice, all of these places. If you're keen to attend a specific event in KZN, because there's always such a nice buzz around town with all of these people around, I'm going to start with the Durban July, and that's where we met. It's a horse race, and it's always the first Saturday in July. You get to dress really smartly, and it's just a really fun vibe, and the whole weekend is just buzzing with people in town. And if you do go, book your picnic spot in advance, because then you have your own set area and you can bring your own food and drinks. The next is the Belito Pro, which is a multi-day surfing event held in Belito. This runs from the end of June to the start of July. There's also a street market in the parking lot. And even though it's 
in the winter time we've had some really nice beach days during the Belito Pro but we've also had cold days so it really depends there are multiple sports events throughout the year like cycling rugby even international rugby games cricket games but the biggest and Craig's favorite is the Comrades Marathon the Comrades is an ultra distance marathon it runs between Durban and Peter Marisburg alternates up and down each year and it's about 90 kilometers and it's a really big event for KwaZulu Natal and I've had the opportunity to do it three times a lot of fun and even if you're just a supporter if you're in the town when the Comrades is happening you want to find a spot on the side of the road you're gonna to to love it well mixed emotions let's just put it that way <laughs> So if you plan to visit KZN during these times, just take note it might get busy and you'll have to book your accommodation very early. I'd like to end off with one of my favorite events in Durban and that's the Trail of Lights. It's normally in December leading up to Christmas. It's at the Botanical Gardens and it's just so nice with lots of food vendors and Christmas lights and it's quite a safe environment. You even have to book tickets for that. If you're in Durban for Christmas then definitely check that out. In KZN you'll find a wide variety of cuisines. It ranges from Greek food, our favorite spot was Nikos in Belito on the beachfront and it even involves some plate breaking at times. Another one of our favorite spots was Peron Peron which is an Argentinian steakhouse at Eat Street at the Lifestyle Center in Belito. And if Italian food is your vibe there are so many options. And I can't mention Italian food in Durban without talking about Spiga, which has been around for years and years. It has changed location, but it's still there and it still has amazing Italian food. And then there's also the pasta making or pizza making classes at Old Town Italy. And there's Mama Luciana's Ooh. in Durban North with ocean views. There's lots of options. There are also plenty of half price, buy one, get one free sushi shops all over the place. And to this day, my mom's favorite restaurant is Ocean Basket, where she orders her fish and chips. And if you come to KZN, you have to try the Indian curry. With the large population of Indians in KwaZulu Natal, the Indian cuisine is amazing. The curries are so good. And one of our favorite places is Marigold Restaurant, where we had one of the greatest crab curries we've ever had. The mutton curries are good. The butter chicken, chicken curries are good. The butter chicken <laughs> is good. The samosas, everything is just amazing. And we also like Marigold because they were the first place to ever invite us to come and vlog. A very authentic experience would be to visit Auntie Pam at the Victoria Street Market. She will most likely get you to try all kinds of food. But what you can't go without is a bunny chow. A bunny chow is a quarter or half loaf of bread hollowed out where they put the curry inside. My favorite is a mutton bunny chow. You can't come to Cuisine Natal and not have a bunny chow. And Auntie Pam won't even send out cutlery because this is something you have to eat with your hands. And while you're at the market, you definitely have to visit all the spice shops. They will take you on a personalized tour. And while you're walking through, they'll just throw the spices that you like all in one bucket. And then at the end, you'll walk away with a personalized mix. And then of course, something very South African is having a braai or a barbecue. Try and make friends with some locals and get them to invite you. The number one app we recommend you to download is Eskom Sapush. It's a huge possibility that you might encounter load shedding, which is where they turn the lights off for certain hours of the day to kind of share the electricity load within the country. So this app gives you a schedule of times where you won't have electricity, so it helps you plan in case your hotel or B&B does not have a generator. And when it comes to getting connected and getting a SIM card, you can get that at the airports or any of the cell phone shops like MTN, Vodacom, Telcom. And it might be a good idea to get one because Wi-Fi isn't available everywhere, especially in the Berg and the Bush. Or maybe you could consider an eSIM. We've never used one before, but that could be something to look at. As you might know, we are no longer in South Africa, but many people still watch our South African content, especially KZN videos, to get ideas of things to do. But if you're looking for locals to follow and get the most up-to-date information, then we suggest the following. My favorite Instagram page to follow is Expressions Durban. They post stories every single morning of the ocean and the beach conditions and they'll let you know if you can come for a surf or a swim or what the weather is doing. Another two Instagram accounts that you should follow are What's on Durban and Durban Local. We'll keep you updated with events and post a lot of photos and videos of things happening in the area.
Then I have to share my friend Mira's page, Adventures of the Fantastic Four. They're a beautiful family of four, obviously. <laughs> and they often post about which restaurants to visit and accommodations to stay in. And then our friend Nicola over at Run On Coffee will keep you up to date with all the best coffee shops in the province. And if you have any suggestions of KZN travel content creators, then please let us know down in the comments. So as you can see, you'll have a lot to consider when planning your trip to KZN. We have about three years worth of videos on our channel about things to do in KZN. And there really is something to do and see for everyone, no matter how long you're there or what your budget is. So we really hope that this video just summarized our experience of all our other videos all in one convenient place. If you have any other questions or comments or if you just want to share your favorite thing to do in the province, please drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you in the next video. Bye! The comments marathon? Yeah, marathon. Mar marathon, yeah. It's called East Bros. East Bros. <laughs> and only swim at beaches where they are co co gods. <laughs> In saying all of this, South Africa is, no, we just make it sound so unsafe, but anyway, never mind. I don't want to say like, this, this goes for any country when you're visiting, like. Okay. Yeah. And you can stay with my parents, but we won't be giving you their details. It's not like, yeah. <laughs> Done.